Hey, it's Pete, and welcome back to Question Christ. And today I wanted to talk about one of my major flaws. I have a lot of them, but this is one of my major ones. Believe it or not, Pete from the Question Christ Project has anger issues. I know it's shocking. <laughs> uh, while this is genuine and what I'm doing here, it's also in a very non stressful situation. You don't get to see the whole all the dimensions of my personality. But one of my problems is that I get angry. And it's not one of those things where I'm hitting my wife or slapping my kids or putting holes through the wall, or punching the wall, nothing like that. Uh, it's more of this simmering, boiling under, passive aggressive, ornery, grumpy, walking on eggshells kind of thing. I grew up in a situation where there were people in my life who were like that. And uh, growing up as a kid like that, it was very uncomfortable, and I, I really never wanted to do that to anybody. Now, I've gotten better over the years. Uh, I used to get a lot more uh, smart at the mouth, and a lot of cussing, and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of that's been burned away by God's grace. But there is still this, when I get really mad, this kind of, uh, you know, not cool passive-aggressive kind of grumpiness that I get going. And again, this isn't once in a while getting mad. This is kind of like a, a character trait, a character flaw that would be. Uh, I, I just got really frustrated lately with the fact that I just can't quit this thing. I can't just beat this thing. And I feel like, well, I am a follower of Christ. I should be able to do this. And so it's been really stressful, especially over the last few weeks. Uh, I was on an extended trip to hang out with extended family. And anybody who goes on an extended trip with extended family knows that this can become a very frustrating dynamic and uh, perfectly set up for my anger situation. <laughs> so basically what happens is I get mad at somebody or something and then once I calm down I get mad that I got mad. I don't know if anyone else can relate to that. And so uh, you know because I take it very seriously my 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 uh, witness for Christ. You know I'm not trying to be a phony but you know I you know I don't want especially my children and my wife to you know oh hey dad goes to church and talks about church all the time but you know he's just a grump and he's kind of a jerk to me sometimes you know so uh, you know I, I take that very seriously especially with the background I've had so you know I've been praying about it. I'm like God you know I don't want to just grit my teeth and try to get through it I just don't want to feel that way I want to have your peace and your joy that I feel most of the time but why can't I just get over this thing you know it's so frustrating to me <clears throat> So I come back from this trip and we're back at our, uh, our, our, our church home um, and it was good to be back and my daughter is changing grades, it's the fall, so she's going into the next level of her uh, uh, Sunday school and so we're in a different part of the, ch uh, the church and the different part of the youth ministry and while my wife was settling her down in the classroom I was looking over at this beautifully painted mural on the wall. And on the wall, uh, there are some, uh, you know, passages. Now, the funny thing is, uh, if you go to church, you probably know what I'm talking about. But what they do is sometimes they they kind of um, they simplify the language of a of a passage so children can understand it. It's more easy for them to understand instead of a lot of yees and thous and all this kind of stuff. And I find it funny because <laughs> I'm reading. Uh, the passage and it was from James 1 verse 21 and basically it says do not deceive yourself uh, do not just be hearers of the word but do what it says I mean I'm paraphrasing but basically that's what it says do not deceive yourself do not only hear the word but do what it says and it just hit me you know I was like wow that's for me <laughs> you know that is for me and so then later on we go to the adult church and uh, the preacher's preaching on Matthew something or other uh, and all of a sudden in the middle of that he makes a reference to James 1 verse 21 again. So for those who don't believe God yells into your life, uh, you know, you know, my atheist friends will call it coincidence, but those, uh, those are not coincidences. Um, and so <laughs> I was like, wow, and that's what I do. You know, I come on here. I talk about God. I talk to God. Talk to people about. Uh, talk to people 
uh, about God. I, I, I listen to sermons about God. I listen to podcasts about God. I read books about God. But one of the first things to go is my personal prayer time, my quiet time with God to actually talk and have a relationship with God. And it usually it's a cycle like this. My life is a mess. I'm on my face. God, please take this away. I don't know why I'm like this. You know what? You know. And then what happens? Especially my anger situation. You know, God, I don't know. Please just like let, let me let go of this. Give me your peace. Give me your your, your spirit. And uh, then everything's good for a few days. And all of a sudden, I'm like, all right, God, I got it. Uh, why don't we meet tomorrow? Oh, by the way, no, I need to go for a run or something like that. And then that's the next thing you know. I'm, you know, I'm not talking or praying. Uh, and then all of a sudden, surprise, surprise, I start unraveling again. So, uh, you know, the problem is, is I am trying to live in my own strength. Okay, and when I was living in my own strength, in my own way, back before I was saved, that is what I was. I was this angry person, okay? Uh, and when I get angry, it is not a coincidence that it's been days since I have prayed last. So just like Jesus says, you know, I am the vine, you are the branches. You can do nothing without me. Again, paraphrasing that. Uh, that is my problem, you know, and it came so clear to me. And I don't know if that happens to you, my fellow Christians. I'm sure that probably does happen where uh, you're trying to live in your own strength and you fail miserably. But that's because you are not having a relationship with the one who gives you that peace. It's a, I like to give an example of this. If Say I have a good friend. His name is Michael. And Michael and I are the best of friends. Um, and then we talk all the time. And then one day I decide I'm not, not, not consciously, but I just stop talking to Michael. And Michael's like, what's up? You know, and he's waiting for me to call him and I don't call. And he's like, I guess I don't understand what's going on. And he subtly tries to get my attention, but you know, he's not really pushy. So, you know, I just stopped talking to him for a long time. Now, the weird thing is the reason I'm not talking to him is because I'm talking to other people about Michael. Not about him like I'm gossiping, but I'm like, hey, Michael is awesome. You need to meet Michael. And, you know, I, I, I tell people about Michael. I want people to get to know Michael better. I write things about Michael, but I don't have any time to talk to Michael. And then one day there's a situation where I need Michael's help, but um, I don't have that help. <laughs> so I have to call Michael. And, I, and, and, and the first thing I say to Michael, is Michael, why weren't you here to help me? And Michael's like, dude, you're ignoring me. You're telling everyone else about me, but you're not talking to me. So I'm just gonna wait till you simmer down and, you know, I try to get your attention, but you're not, I'm not, you know. And that's exactly what I do. And I don't know if that's what you do. And for those who aren't even Christian, uh, dealing with uh, maybe addictions or, uh, again, bad character flaws, or just that emptiness that, that this world can give you. Um, nothing fills it. And the reason nothing fills it is because only God can fill it. So the only way we can get that is to have that relationship with God. So uh, I don't know if anyone can learn from this situation. Uh, I, I, I'm also putting this on video so I can remind myself not to go down this road again. Um, and, and to just, you know, if I'm there every day, praying to God, asking for His peace, and his guidance and, and making me less of an angry person. And I leave all my weaknesses at the foot of his cross and say, God, I know you will take this. I know you will take this. Please just take this away and help me be peaceful. Um, when I do that, it, it, it's amazing what God will do in my life. It's not always perfect days, but they're much easier days. And so, um, yeah, my major character flaw is anger. Uh, but I, again, God uh, uses everything for his glory. And uh, in my weakness, uh, you know, he's showing me strength. So uh, I hope that's been helpful to you. Please, uh, any comments or uh, questions you may have, I'll talk to you soon.